July 1974. The body of an unknown woman was discovered just off the side of the road in the Race Point Dunes of Provincetown, Massachusetts. Since nobody came forward to identify her, and since the police had no idea who she was, she was given the nickname Lady of the Dunes. Whoever she was, she had obviously been murdered. Two sets of footprints led to her body, and a set of tire tracks were found 50 yards from the scene. She was lying face down on a blanket, and she was nearly decapitated, her head barely connected to her body. One side of her skull had been crushed by some kind of heavy tool. Interestingly, a blue bandana and a pair of Wrangler jeans were resting under her nearly severed head, acting as a sort of pillow. Her hands, forearm, and several of her teeth were missing, taken by the killer to either hide their identity or the identity of the victim. There were no signs of a struggle, suggesting that the Lady of the Dunes either knew her murderer or was sleeping when he attacked. Despite being found close to the road, her corpse had been lying there for around two weeks. There was apparently a significant amount of quote-unquote insect activity. Since nobody came forward to identify her, she was buried after the case went cold. Still, in the years of 1980, 2000, and 2013, her body was dug up from the ground in fresh efforts to discover who she was and who took her life. These efforts proved unsuccessful. In fact, there's really very little we know about her at all. Experts say she could have been as young as 20 or as old as 49. However, they have been able to produce these reconstructions, showing what she may have looked like in real life. So what does any of this have to do with the movie industry, you're probably wondering? Well, a fresh lead was uncovered in the most unlikely of places. The movie, Jaws. Take a look at this scene from the movie. Pay special attention to the people in the crowd. This scene shows the 4th of July crowds arriving in the town of Amity. Take a look at this extra passing through in the background of the shot. She's wearing a blue bandana and what appear to be a pair of Wrangler jeans, just like the kind found resting under the head of the dead woman. What's more, she even seems to bear an uncanny resemblance to the reconstruction photos. Jaws was released in 1975, but was filmed in Massachusetts in 1974, right around the time that the Lady of the Dunes was murdered. Most of the footage for the movie was shot only a hundred miles from where her lifeless body was found. Could this passing extra be the Lady of the Dunes, playing an extra in a film, caught on camera just before her disappearance and death? Since there's no other evidence to support this theory, many people believe it to be nothing more than wild speculation, but the case's lead investigator has taken a special interest in the lead and is actively investigating it. The timing's right, the location's right, and the clothes, face, and figure of the extra match the dead woman found at the crime scene. Since the case has remained unsolved for so many years, it's unlikely we'll ever know if this woman really was the murder victim. Still, it's strange to think that this could be her, immortalized in a movie forever, shortly before her brutal murder. The next time you watch Jaws and get to this scene, Pay attention to this extra, and give a little thought to the Lady of the Dunes. If you haven't seen the movie Scarface with Al Pacino before, then you're missing out. It's an exciting, violent, ultra-quotable gangster classic, and I highly recommend it. If you have seen it, however, then you're probably familiar with the infamous chainsaw shower scene. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, this movie gets gory. During the scene, Tony Montana and one of his amigos go inside a hotel to do a drug deal, with two of their partners in crime waiting outside in a car as backup. Well, things go sour, 
but Tony's friends in the car are too distracted by this girl in a blue bikini to notice. This actress in the bikini was Tammy Lynn Leppert. Shortly after filming this scene, she went missing. Nobody has seen or heard from her since. As of right now, she's been missing for 35 years. She was only 18 years old when she vanished. The circumstances surrounding her disappearance are mysterious to say the least. Tammy was a Floridian beauty queen growing up and had big dreams of going to Hollywood and becoming a famous actress. She was in talks to star in three major motion pictures and was tipped to become one of the biggest stars of the 80s. Prior to her disappearance, she had only played minor roles in films like Spring Break. After the filming of Spring Break, Tammy went to a party by herself. When she came home from the party, she was apparently, and I quote, a completely different person, at least according to one of her close friends, Wing Flanagan. Tammy became extremely paranoid and rarely left her room or answered the door. She said she was sure someone was out to get her and refused to eat or drink out of any open containers, fearing she would be poisoned. The only thing she ever said about the party was that she had seen something horrible that she wasn't supposed to, but she never elaborated further. After spring break, she landed her small role in Scarface. Tammy returned home after the fourth day of filming. The fake blood on the set had sent her into a hysterical fit, a fit so strong that she needed to be escorted home. She was acting extremely paranoid now, screaming that somebody was looking for her and wanted to kill her. Tammy's mother became concerned about her daughter's strange behavior. She took Tammy to a mental health hospital for an evaluation. The doctors found absolutely no trace of drugs or alcohol in her system, and nothing was physically wrong with her. The day after she was discharged from hospital, Tammy left her house without combing her hair. Her mother noticed this because it was so out of character. Tammy then hopped into a car with one of her friends, Keith Roberts. Keith was the last person to see Tammy. In the car, she confessed to Keith that she was terrified somebody was going to kill her, that she had been sleeping with a knife under her pillow, and that she wanted to run away and start a new life elsewhere. She asked him to drive her to Fort Lauderdale, 170 miles from their location. When he refused, the pair got into an argument, and Tammy got out of the car at Cocoa Beach in Florida. And that's about as much as anyone really knows. She hasn't been seen or heard from since. The young Tammy Lynn Leppert's acting career was cut tragically short, and her fate remains a mystery to this day. A Cocoa Beach detective did receive two anonymous calls about Tammy after she disappeared, saying that she was alive and well and pursuing a career as a nurse, but these could have easily been hoax calls. People have speculated that Tammy may have been involved in a drug and money laundering ring, a ring involving powerful people. Indeed, a private investigator working the case said that the police had done suspiciously little to find Tammy. Other people have theorized that she may have been the victim of the Beauty Queen killer, a serial murderer who operated in the area at the time. However, no evidence has ever been found to link anyone to her disappearance. What was the horrible thing that Tammy saw at the party she attended? Was somebody really after her, trying to kill her? Did they make her disappear, or did Tammy run away and go into hiding? Did she simply have an undiagnosed mental condition? All questions that remain unanswered. Tammy only had a small role in Scarface, but it's unsettling to watch this scene, knowing that only a few days later, she had vanished from the face of the earth entirely. Here's a weird one. Have a look at this famous quote and try to remember what movie it's from. Pause the video now and have a little think. You recognize it, right? Most people do, myself included, but it's hard to remember which film it's from. You can even seem to hear how it's said by the actors in your head. So what does it do? 
do. And that's the beauty of it. It doesn't do anything. Kind of like that. You can hear it quite vividly. So where's it from? When you ask people, they usually answer with something like Back to the Future, The Big Lebowski, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, or Doctor Who, or The Simpsons. But it's not from any of those. In fact, it's not from any film at all. To this day, it remains a mystery why so many people recognize it immediately. There are no plausible theories, and its origin remains unknown. How did this non-existent quote embed itself into the memory of millions of people? It's something that's perplexed people for a long time now. There have even been studies conducted by Harvard and the University of Edinburgh to try and solve this mystery. But so far, nothing. To this day, it remains the only example of the Mandela Effect with absolutely no explanation. And that, in itself, warrants a place on this list. Natalie Wood was a well-known celebrity back in the day. She starred in such classics as Miracle on 34th Street, Rebel Without a Cause, and West Side Story. But nowadays, it's her untimely and suspicious death that she's best known for. It was November 1981. Natalie was on board a luxury yacht with her husband, television star Robert Wagner. Also on board was the actor Christopher Walken, Yes, that Christopher Walken. I won't annoy you with an impression. Wood and Walken had become close while working together on the set of Brainstorm. Wood's relationship with her husband, Wagner, was rocky to say the least. The pair had already divorced in the past and remarried, and those close to Wood believed that a new romance was sparking between her and Christopher Walken. The two were getting close. Too close. When Wagner found out that his wife was becoming infatuated with Walken, he flew out to the set of Brainstorm, saying that he wasn't going to, quote-unquote, make a fool of himself over this. Anyway, back to the yacht. The three of them sailed off into the night together. The only other person on board the yacht was the captain, Dennis Davin, a close personal friend of Natalie Wood. At 1.30am, a distress call was made from the yacht. Natalie Wood had disappeared. At 7.30am in the morning, her body was found floating in the water in a Catalina Island cove. She was wearing a nightgown, heavy socks, and a thick parka. A rubber dinghy was also found nearby, with fingernail marks scratched into the side, suggesting that she had fallen out of it and tried to claw her way back in. The autopsy revealed that there was a lot of alcohol in her system, and she was clearly drunk at the time she died. There were also several bruises on her body, and a fresh cut on her cheek. After a short investigation, it was concluded that Natalie had simply sailed off in the dinghy in the middle of the night, fell into the water by mistake, and simply drowned. Well, that didn't make much sense to anyone that actually knew Natalie. She had had a profound fear of the water ever since she was a child. She was a serious hydrophobe, and was even afraid to wash her own hair. Relaxing on a huge yacht would have been fine for her, but there's no way she would have sailed off in a dinghy by herself, especially without a life jacket. Now, when people are drunk, they do make silly choices, but they don't tend to put themselves in life and death scenarios involving their biggest phobia. Natalie's husband, Wagner, insisted that she had left in the dinghy by herself that night, but there were many inconsistencies in his story, not to mention it's changed over the years. One inconsistency, for instance, was that Wood and Wagner were heard having a heated argument on the yacht that night. Davin, the ship's captain, says that the argument was about Christopher Walken, specifically Natalie's affection for him. The argument was likely fueled by alcohol, seeing as everyone on board had been drinking heavily that night. When Captain Davin asked Christopher Walken to intervene in the argument, Walken apparently replied, never get involved in an argument between a man and a wife. Wagner had apparently smashed a bottle of wine in a jealous rage earlier that evening, and said to Walken, what are you trying to do, fuck my wife? 
I guess you can kind of see why Walken would have wanted to stay out of the argument. On top of all of that, people on a nearby boat also heard some strange screaming at around midnight. They apparently heard a woman screaming, Help me! Somebody help me! They also claimed to have heard a man's voice say in a mocking tone, Okay, honey, we'll get you. They didn't report the screams, because there was a party boat nearby as well, and they assumed from the mocking tone that this was some kind of game on board the ship. Finally, the dinghy found near Wood's body didn't appear to have been piloted at all. The ignition was off, the gear stick was set to neutral, and the oars were locked. If she had indeed sailed off in the dinghy by herself, she must have just sat inside it without operating it. Why would she have done that? Natalie Wood's death was officially ruled as an accidental drowning by the coroner. However, after re-examining the evidence years later, her cause of death was changed to drowning and other undetermined factors. There's so many conflicting accounts about what happened on the boat that night, it's hard to know who to believe. Some people think that Wood's death was genuinely an accident, and others think that Wagner played a larger role in her demise than he's admitting to. Everyone has their theories. There are several factors that I've had to leave out of this, but if you'd like to research the case more, there's plenty of information online to sift through. Happy sleuthing. Quite a famous entry here at number 5. During and immediately after the filming of the film The Omen, a number of mysterious and tragic events happened involving members of the cast and crew. As a result, many people now believe that the movie, or at least the movie set, was cursed. Let's take a look at a few of the disturbing occurrences. Firstly, the son of the lead actor, Gregory Peck, shot and killed himself just before filming for the movie began. Not to mention, Peck himself narrowly escaped death when he cancelled a flight reservation. The plane he was scheduled to be on crashed, killing everybody on board. Secondly, one of the animal handlers was also killed two weeks after helping film the crazy baboon sequence in the movie. He was attacked by a lion, and reportedly eaten alive. Some of the footage for the movie was also destroyed, when 13,500 feet of film inexplicably burst into fire in the processing lab. All of the technicians were baffled, and couldn't find an explanation for the fire. Now, those could have all just been coincidences, fair enough. But the creepiest event linked to this curse occurred on August 13th, 1976. John Richardson, the special effects consultant for the movie, was driving in the Netherlands with one of his assistants, Liz Moore. They were working on another movie at the time, A Bridge Too Far. Whilst driving, they were involved in a head-on collision. Liz Moore was cut in half by the other vehicle's wheel, mirroring the death of a character in The Omen, a scene for the movie which Richardson himself had designed. Chillingly, this all took place 66.6 kilometers away from the Dutch town, Omen. A signpost at the scene of the accident read as much. This alleged curse is made all the more creepy because of the omen's subject matter. Were these tragedies simply coincidental, or was there something more devilishly sinister at work here? I'll leave that for you to decide. Hey guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. Well, I've finally returned from Japan, and it's good to be back, finally making some videos again. I know it's been a while, but uh, I think these were some interesting mysteries, unsolved mysteries. And yeah, if anything, they go to prove that sometimes reality can be stranger than fiction. But what do you think? Are there any that I left out of this list? Uh, and what do you think about the mysteries that I included? Any theories you want to share? Well, if so, do so down below. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button, or I'll smash you. And I should be back again very, very shortly, now that I'm back in the UK. Until then, guys. You will stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark.